Hello, and welcome to a beginner guide on astrophotography. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up the mount, setting up the telescope, starting to acquire images, and then taking those images from the raw format into a completed image. So I'm out here about an hour before the sun is supposed to go down. Uh, I like to set up before just so I can see if there's any problems before I try to start imaging because light is precious and we got to use the most of it. To start you need to get out your mount base and put it on level solid ground. The next part of setting up the mount is attaching the tracking feature. Simply lift up out of the packaging that keeps it safe and put it on to the mount. Then you screw in this bottom here until tight. Now the next part of setting up your mount is doing a polar alignment and that will be shown in the video over here. The polar align is pretty simple but can be quite complex. Essentially you're going to use this provided scope that's inside the telescope and line up Polaris inside the center. Once that's done it gives you a pretty rough estimate of where the scope is on earth. Now the next thing I like to do is go ahead and mount the uh, telescope onto the mount. Like so. Simply place and tighten. The next thing you should do is hook up all the wire. Like so. Hand controller plugs in right here. And the power for the mount plugs in at the back and goes to any power source. An outlet, a battery, doesn't really matter as long as it powers the mount safe. The next thing to do is add the weight and balance the mount. So simply screw in the mounting shaft right here until it's tight. Then you slide on your counterweight. Next step is to balance the mount. Simply release the clutches here and here, slide the mount over, and ensure that neither side is favored, as you can see. Next, you want to start up the mount and proceed with the instructions on the hand control which will be shown in the next clip. So the next step is turning on the mount and you'll be prompted with various things on your hand controller. Click enter. It will then ask you to index the mount. Then you're going to want to type in your time. Typically you'll be starting astrophotography around 9 o'clock. So go ahead and type in something around the time you are uh, taking your photographs. Next you're going to choose if your daylight savings or not. And then finally you're going to type in the date. Then the mount will ask for an alignment. Now once you follow the steps on the hand controller, it will then ask you to do a two point alignment. This means the mount will track this sky like so and find a desired star which will be used as a calibration star which will give frame of reference to the mount. Of course do this at night when the stars are visible but this is a good demonstration nonetheless. Once your mount is calibrated you can then type in your desired coordinates for the object you want to photograph. This could be Messier, NGC, or any other coordinate system. Once the mount is tracking on the celestial body you can then start taking photographs. I tend to use an intervalometer, but a computer or a built-in intervalometer on your camera could work well. Simply turn it on, begin the intervalometer, and begin to take photos. Once enough images are acquired, you can then begin to tear down the mount, making sure not to damage any of the sensitive components like the telescope, camera, or mount. I would recommend creating a folder with uh, four enclosed folders that are labeled bias, dark, flat, and light. For this, Once you properly set up your files, you can then open Cyril. The first thing you're going to want to do when you open Cyril is go up to the top left here and click on the home icon. This will allow you to set a working directory. Uh, so you're going to want to go to your folder with your um, chosen images. Double click on that and click open. The next step is to then go to scripts and select OSC pre-processing. Once the image is done, we can then start trying to pull out the image data. The first step to do this is going down to the bottom right here and selecting auto stretch. 
This will give you a rough estimate of what your photo will look like after stretching. The next step after this is to highlight the brightest area of your image. This could be a galaxy, a bright star, anything that is just brighter than the surrounding. So I'm going to highlight this galaxy right here. And now I'm going to go up to image processing. Next, I'm going to click on histogram transformation. And this is a good place for beginners to start. Now, if you want a little bit more advanced, which I recommend, you could go back up to image processing and go down to generalized hyperbolic stretch. This will pull up a slightly more advanced version of what we just had. So next, I'm going to turn off auto stretch back to linear with the selection still highlighted. And next, I'm going to click this dropper button. This will pull up the uh, average light of the selected area. And then next what I'm going to do is pull up the stretch factor fairly high and pull up the local stretch as well. So we're going to pull that down just a tad, keep it nice and dark. Something like that for our original, maybe a little bit more stretch factor. Pull this down a little bit bring it up just a tad okay this is a good first uh, section to apply so I'm going to go ahead and apply that and we're going to do that again we're going to click the symmetry point we're going to up the local stretch up the stretch factor we may actually drop down our symmetry point a little bit okay bring this down here actually we're going to bump that up just a tad Okay, we're going to apply that once again, and we'll do that one more time. Up the stretch factor, bring down the local stretch intensity, just the symmetry point, and just play around with it until something starts to appear. So this is a good general thing. I mean, obviously I would do a little bit more effort to kind of darken the surrounding, but at least we have an image that has appeared out and we can see both of our nebulae. So after that, just want to go down to save. You're going to want to click that and it will save your stretch. 